Welcome to the fifth lecture of week four of the course Unit Operations of Particulate Matter. In this lecture, we will discuss non-mechanical conveyors. Now, as far as non-mechanical conveyors are concerned, these are two types. First is hydraulic conveyor and second is pneumatic conveyor. And we also called this as hydraulic transport or pneumatic transport. So now these non-mechanical conveyors that is hydraulic as well as pneumatic transport, these are used for longer distances. And uh, why these are used for longer distances? For this, uh, we should see some facts. In a country like India, where the coal fields are highly localized, uh, what is the meaning of this? That when we have to uh, take the coal from one place to another place because coal are found in some specific states only like uh, uh, Jharkhand, uh, Odisha, etc. So, in this, uh, uh, so these states or these locations are quite uh, specific and from here we have to take the coal to other spaces. Uh, we have to take coal to other places. So, it has been observed that the cost of transportation of coal over long distances that is around 600 to 1000 kilometer or more than that by railways often exceeds the cost of transported coal itself. So, here we are taking one example of coal and when we are transferring this by railways after some time after uh, some distances it will not be that much economical. So, in that case we use some other means and these are hydraulic as well as pneumatic transport. In this situation a continuous mode of transport such as slurry transportation is desirable. So, what happens in hydraulic as well as pneumatic transport? The um, solid is uh, transferred through a media that is uh, in the form of slurry or when it is suspended in the fluid. If the carrier is water, if the fluid is water, we call it hydraulic transport and if it is air, we call it pneumatic transport. Hydraulic transport through underground pipeline can be employed for transport over long distances. So, you see here hydraulic transport uh, can be uh, made underground also. So, that is uh, one of the reason that it can uh, that is one of the reason why the hydraulic transport is so popular because it can be transported through any route or uh, underground also. So, space requirement will, will uh, not be that much high in this case. Now, let us see few advantages of this, advantages of uh, hydraulic as well as pneumatic transport and these are continuous operation, operation uh, continues uh, for longer time, practically immune to adverse weather condition. Now, what happens when it is transported in the form of slurry, it is transported inside the pipes. So, either that pipe is available over the earth or inside the earth, it is uh, not affected by the weather because slurry is uh, transported inside the pipes. So, that is uh, uh, one major advantage, it has less manpower requirement, possibility of following a relatively shorter route because it can be placed uh, underground also. So, route requirement uh, will be uh, so, route requirement uh, can be reduced or we can go for shortest route in this case. Otherwise, when we have to transport through rail or road, we have to go with the specific route only. Now, here I am having one table which speaks about mode of transport. There are different modes of transport and uh, specific transportation capacity that is uh, material, weight of the material that is kg by uh, per kilowatt that is uh, kg per kilowatt means uh, how much material can be transported per unit uh, consumption of power and power consumption is uh, uh, watt per uh, kg per kilometer. When we go for automobile specific transportation capacity moves from 65 to 200 and power consumption 0.149 and similarly you can see other factors. Whereas, when we are considering through airways, 
uh, its uh, specific transportation capacity is very less and power consumption is significantly high. So, that is not used for general purpose. Whereas, when we consider for uh, pipeline transportation, its capacity varies from 5400 to 40,000 kg per kilowatt. So, that is very huge specific transportation capacity and power consumption is very less even it is uh, almost equal to waterways but uh, carrying capacity in pipeline is significantly higher than the waterways. So, in this way pipeline transportation is most economic. Now, let us start with the uh, hydraulic transport as we have discussed that in hydraulic transport the mode is uh, water or carrier is water. So, uh, when uh, uh, we have to transfer the solid we have to make slurry in the water and then that slurry will be transported through pipe. So, that is um, that happens in hydraulic transportation. Now, here we will discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of hydraulic transportation. Advantages of hydraulic transport are high capacity, feasibility of transport over long distances, high capacity is there, uh, trans feasibility of transport over long distances, uh, feasibility of automation, low operational costs and feasibility of combining the transport of material with some other technological process such as hydraulic destruction, enrichment or rising. So, here we have different uh, advantages of hydraulic uh, transportation, but along with this we have some disadvantages also such as disadvantages include a considerable consumption of water because it is uh, entirely transferred uh, as a slurry and uh, that is prepared with the water. So, obviously water consumption is very high in this case and of electric power consumption is very high because we have to use the pumps, wear of the pipeline and pumps when transporting abrasive material. So, uh, when we have to transport the abrasive material we can have uh, wear and tear in pumps and pipelines etcetera. So, these are some disadvantages for more you can refer this uh, link. And when we are preparing the slurry or suspension, we have to take care uh, f about few factors like how much should be the concentration, what should be the volume fraction etcetera. So, when the particle size is very small, if it is less than 50 micrometer and volume fraction of the solid in slurry is large that is greater than uh, 0 0.5, the settling velocity of the particles will be so small that they can hardly settle and remain practically in suspension. So, what happens when we have to transport uh, hydraulically the um, solid which we are um, which we have to transport for this we may prepare a suspension or slurry, but whatever particles are available that should not be settled down and when they will not be settled down when the terminal settling velocity of the particle is lesser than the um, velocity of uh, slurry. So, velocity of the suspension. So, when it will be uh, greater than uh, when it velocity is greater for suspension it will never allow particle to settle uh, on the other hand particle will be suspended in the slurry. Now, in hydraulic transport what happens when we have to transport the solid we prepare slurry with the with these solid where solids are uh, mixed with the water and prepare the slurry. Now, what happens in this slurry whatever particles are available that particle should remain suspended and it should not be settled down because in that case there will be forming of solid at the uh, lower section of the pipe and transportation will not happen. So, such non-settling slurries may be treated as a single non-Newtonian fluid and the two phase character of the slurry can be neglected. So, when uh, particle size is very small and uh, volume fraction uh, uh, of solid in the slurry is greater than 50, we can consider that uh, a slurry as a single phase where particles are completely suspended in the slurry. Now, the minimum conveying velocity required for hydraulic transport is empirically related like this V minimum square by G dp uh, here we have density 
uh, fraction that is rho l by rho s minus rho l into 0 0.0251 into this factor. So, here you see u minimum is basically the minimum conveying velocity which lies here also. dp is the uh, particle size and uh, what is the limitation over this uh, uh, dp value that we will discuss. This is the density of liquid, this is for solid. Uh, and D is the diameter of pipe in which uh, uh, transportation occur, rho B is the density of bulk and mu L is the viscosity of liquid. Now, in this expression dp value is the particle diameter and it is assumed that 85 percent of particles have a size less than dp. So, how we decide the dp value like dp value is decided wherever 85 percent of the particle is size particle is of size less than dp. So, dp can be calculated as when 85 percent of the particle lies uh, when 85 percent of particle will have size lesser than dp. So, uh, uh, when 85 percent uh, collection is obtained then we can say that uh, then whatever would be the uh, particle size that we can consider as dp and uh, through one example we will illustrate in detail how the dp should be calculated. And here rho b is the bulk density of the slurry and that is one minus epsilon rho s plus epsilon rho l. So, epsilon is basically the volume fraction of liquid in the slurry. So, this equation is based on experiments performed using slurries containing particles of size less than 1 mm and uh, pipe diameter should be in the range of 0 0.025 to 0 0.3 meter. So, carrying out experiment in this condition we can uh, have that uh, empirical relationship. Now, if you see this image, this image shows a pipeline and uh, if you see the environment, this is a completely cold condition. So, here we have transportation of slurry in a hydraulic form. More closely, you can see here, here we have uh, some uh, uh, slurry which is of black color, maybe this is coal and here you can observe uh, uh, more closely that in this way par the particle prepare the slurry and hydraulically it is transported, hydraulically it is transported like this. So, in adverse weather condition also material can be transported through hydraulic transportation. Now, here we have one example, uh, in this example material A of a specific gravity 1.5 has a following size distribution. This is the following size, this is the size distribution for the material. If the total material is to be transported hydraulically through a 0.3 meter diameter horizontal pipe to a distance of 15 kilometer in the form of homogeneous slurry containing 20 percent by weight of solid estimate the minimum conveying velocity that is to be maintained. So, here you see slurry is preparing with 20 percent uh, solid mass with 20 percent solid uh, particle size distribution is given to us and uh, uh, other parameters such as pipe uh, diameter etcetera is given to us. So, let us start the computation of minimum conveying velocity in hydraulic transport. This is the equation that uh, just we have discussed. V minimum we have to uh, calculate over here. So, V minimum lie uh, in both side and where rho L is 1000 because water we have used as a carrier. Here rho L we have considered as density of water because water is used as a carrier. Solid density 1500 kg per meter cube, diameter of uh, pipe is 0.3 meter mu L is uh, that is viscosity of water. Now, suspension contains 20 percent by weight of solid. So, we can calculate bulk density like 20 percent uh, uh, if solid. So, 80 percent should be water. So, 100 divided by 20 by 1500 plus 80 by 1000. So, 1071 1.4 kg per meter cube is the bulk density of the slurry. So, rho b we know already now we have to calculate value of dp, other parameters we know except v minimum. 
So, as far as computation of dp is concerned what we have to do we already know the particle size distribution which is given to us and uh, if you remember we are given particle size as well as cumulative mass fraction. When we plot this in this curve what happens uh, particle size corresponding to 85 percent mass fraction we have to find because as far as definition of dp is concerned that is corresponding to 85 percent mass fraction that is corresponding to 85 percent mass fraction. So, when we draw the line of uh, line around 85 percent in this uh, uh, y axis because that is cumulative mass and when we draw the line vertically towards x axis the particle size we can obtain is 0.83 mm. So, here particle size is 0.83 and thus 85 percent of particle have size less than 0.83 because all these particle will having size less than 0.83 which comes uh, uh, below 85 percent cumulative mass fraction. So, while putting all these value over here we can calculate minimum conveying velocity that is 1.68 meter per second. So, in this way you can calculate the minimum conveying velocity in hydraulic transport. Now, we will discuss pneumatic transport. In pneumatic transport you know the carrier is air. Now, here we will discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of pneumatic transport. Advantages are no dust contamination, flow direction can be varied because we can go for smallest or uh, any route we can go through or we can take any turn because that is pneumatically transported. Low maintenance cost, it can handle multiple products with one system because pneumatically it has to transport. So, it will not uh, contaminate the inner level of the pipe. So, we can handle multiple production in the same, we can handle multiple products in the same system or same pipeline virtually no limitation on capacity, product type, distance or routing. These are the advantages along with this some disadvantages are also there like particle must be dry, we cannot uh, transport uh, moist uh, solid. So, particle should be dry, possibility of product breakage because when we particle are transported uh, with um, suspension of other particle. So, they can strike with each other or they can strike with the wall of the pipe. So, breaking may occur, wear and tear on the pipe it happens. These are some disadvantages of pneumatic transport. Now, when we consider pneumatic transport as we have discussed in hydraulic transport that uh, slurry that particle should be suspended in the slurry. So, in the similar line we consider in pneumatic transport also that particle should be uniformly distributed in the pipe like carrier is air. So, uh, particle which we are considering that should be uniformly um, spread into the uh, conveyor or into the pipeline. And when this happen with the low density solids or low solid to gas ratio and high gas velocity, the solids normally remain fully suspended. At low solid to gas ratio that is less than 10 by weight as usually employed in pneumatic transport, minimum conveying velocity can be calculated by this expression where it is equal to 132.365 rho s by rho s plus 1000 dp per 0.4, where dp is the diameter of largest particle to be conveyed. Because when we are able to carry, able to convey the largest particle, obviously smaller particle will be carried or will be conveyed easily. So, this equation is based on the experiments with particle less than uh, 8 mm in size and specific gravity less than 2.65. So, this is about minimum conveying velocity. Now, here we have total pressure drop in pneumatic transport through horizontal pipe. These are different uh, uh, pressure drops and details of these pressure drops are uh, uh, shown in this slide and once we calculate value of total pressure drop, we can calculate total power consumption utilized in pneumatic transport. Now, here we will discuss one example on pneumatic transport. Now, in this example what we have to do, we have to estimate the minimum velocity required to transport ore particle with specific gravity 2 
pneumatically so we have to transport the ore particle pneumatically at the rate of 30 kg per minute to the distance of 25 km from following data. So, diameter of pipe is given 0.07 meter and particle size distribution is given in mm as minus 2.032 plus 1.676 and minus 1.676 plus 1.6. So, in this range particles are available which we have to transport. Now, how we can calculate minimum uh, conveying velocity? This is the expression. Here only problem is with dp. If we find out the value of dp, we can calculate v minimum. Now, if you remember what is dp, dp is basically maximum diameter of particle that we have to transport. So, if you see the particle size distribution, maximum should be 2.032 and minimum should be 1.6. So, dp should be the maximum size. So, here we can consider dp as 2.032 mm. So, here dp we have uh, uh, noted down, rho s we already know, so v minimum can be calculated very easily. So, that is 7.394 meter per second. So, in this way we can calculate minimum conveying velocity for pneumatic transport. Now, in this slide I have shown some of the example where material is filled in silo through pneumatic transport. So, you see here material is available which is conveyed from here to here through you can see uh, this may be screw conveyor we can say because feed is coming over here and discharge is uh, uh, not at the end but before that. So, that is possible in uh, screw conveyor. So, material is coming over here and here we have the blower through this blower solid can be taken by this air and that is uh, filled in this silo pneumatically. Another animation we have when we are uh, uh, considering dosing different granular materials and filling a mixture or blender. When we have to consider dose of different material and we have to prepare the mixture of this, each dose will be collected and, the, and then it will be transported pneumatically and while transporting this mixing occur inside the pipe and therefore, uh, when we get the material at discharge and it is already a mixture. So, in this way we can uh, use uh, pneumatic transport. Here very interesting example like if you see this is basically wheat and when we have to uh, pack the wheat that can be packed pneumatically because from here it uh, takes the wheat and here we put some container where this wheat can be stored. So, in this way is uh, storing of wheat or packing of wheat can be done pneumatically. Now, here we have summary of the lecture. Now, this summary is summary of lecture 3, 4 and 5 which we have discussed for transportation of solid. So, in these lecture transportation of solids in plant as well as outside the plant is discussed. Mechanical conveyors are discussed where working of screw, belt, apron and conveyors are described and finally, we have discussed hydraulic and pneumatic transportation along with working example and here you can uh, uh, have the books through which uh, you can go through about transportation of solid in detail. Few web links are also used which are available in respective slides so that you can refer and here we are ending this course as it was the last lecture of last week. So, in this four week course we have discussed unit operations such as sedimentation, filtration, fluidization, flotation and transportation of solid. I hope you are benefited with this course. I wish you success in upcoming online examination. Thank you for joining me in this course. Thank you very much.